Dad Life presents Screen Geeks Live TV and Film Talk Show. Today we're going to talk about Frozen Empire, the latest Ghostbusters film in the story Ghostbusters franchise. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello everybody and welcome to Screen Geeks. My name is Jay and with me tonight, the world traveler, the the busy the busiest friend I have in my life right now, Ralph D. Alpha. How you doing, my friend? I'm doing all right. I'm surprised. You, did you write down that intro? Because it's been no. a while. Uh, it's it's uh, literally. You know how? I, at least for me in my brain, which is not it's not a normal functioning brain. Like I can't remember. Like if Colleen asked me to do something and it's it's gone out of my head in ten seconds, but right. just hitting the live button, it just somehow just and it went right back live. Right? Could you do that with the Lost Podcast? I think you could. I totally could. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. From Raleigh, North Carolina, it's the Lost Podcast with Jay and Jack, a podcast dedicated to Lost on ABC. Something like that, right? Maybe. Something. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> Dude, I, I, I just to let everybody know, I'm completely sick, and it yeah. is from traveling, um, so bear with me. Uh, but I wanted to talk about Ghostbusters <clears throat> because um, Ghostbusters. This is only the fifth time this has happened in 40 years, so I mean, you know, it's a story. Then listen, here's the thing with Ghostbusters. I grew up, I saw the original Ghostbusters in the theater. I know yep. you were like one year old or something at that time. Uh-huh. Um, and I remember where I saw it. I saw it in Lakewood at yep. the Lakewood uh, um, mall. There was a theater outside of the mall. Mm-hmm. And it was a huge part of my childhood. Yeah. Saw Ghostbusters 2 twice in the theater on consecutive days. Uh, didn't really care for it that much. And Ghostbusters kind of was more of a childhood thing. Sure. Then, then I did not, I did not like continue on. I didn't watch the real Ghostbusters and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like you did like Ghostbusters is so much part of your life. Ghostbusters is part of my childhood. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So. You, well, the thing is said, you grew was, up to become a normal adult. I just kept, kept I mean, look at, the, look at all the BS I have in my room. I mean, it's not as much as yours, but like there, this is definitely not, I did not grow up. Uh, it's just, I grew, I think I grew out of Ghostbusters. Yeah. Um, but I saw I, 2016. I was excited. Mm-hmm. I saw that movie. I very much enjoyed it just because proton packs, yeah. Um, uh, uh, was Slimer in it? Was there a Slimer in that yeah, one? Yes, Slimer and a Mrs. Slimer. Yeah, and then uh, then Afterlife came out, and I liked that one. Yeah. I watched it twice. I saw that twice in the theater, um, and haven't seen it since. Uh, but it was like one of those things where you go in, you're like, man, I get to see Proton Packs, I get to see the Ecto one, yeah, uh, and I get to see the the old Ghostbusters. Something I kind of missed in the original or in the 2016, which is fine because yeah. it's still proton packs and bust and ghost which yeah. is like why why you like ghostbusters absolutely but i feel like i was missing um i, I kind of wanted to see those guys as ghostbusters which yeah. we didn't see in the yeah. in the 2016 we got, we got we got like a taste they were there in afterlife it was like yeah. a cameo in afterlife yeah and then afterlife um i liked it because it's like oh it's kind of a it's it's so hard to to explain but it felt new Mm -hmm. but there was so much of the same stuff like it's like i like that it didn't feel like ghostbusters in that you know uh, they weren't ghostbusters yeah it felt like a it it felt like a horror movie on a farm or like a dead or something yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but then it turned into gozer and all that stuff which is fine and i enjoyed it yeah, uh, I never, never revisited this. Revisited it, and then this movie came out, and I could give a rip about it. I did not care about it. I, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to see Ghostbusters tomorrow. <laughs> I completely forgot. Um, didn't care one iota. The trailer gave me chills just because of the piano sound when sure. you see the thing. Yeah. Like it's, it's a great reveal. But, um, um, I, I was like, I don't really care about this movie. Yeah, and um. I, I believe it is my second favorite Ghostbusters movie. Oh, I wow, like it more okay. than Ghostbusters too. Uh, and I think I think that helps that I was had like zero. Yeah, you had no of, expectations going into no, it. Just kind of no, like not yeah. at all. Yeah, not at all. 
and dude, like it, like I want to go see this one again. I'm definitely gonna like get it when it comes out on yep. digital. I, I it's and and I, I heard nothing but bad things about it. So That's going the, into it, I yes. extra didn't care. Yes, which I think helped me. Yes, I think it helped me because like uh, you were at the premiere. Yeah, and I, I think I asked you like how it was. I like DM'd you. Yeah. And you're like, I really liked it. Uh, I have a friend, Brandon, who was at that premiere also. Mm -hmm. And I asked him how it was. He's like, eh, you know, it's all right. It's good. It's not really my Ghostbusters, but what, and so uh -huh. my expectations were just at an all time low. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I think that helped me going into it. Stevie said, for those, you know, Stevie, my wife said before we went to the movie, like as we, re as we sat down at the theater, she said, if I fall asleep, just I'm okay with it. Just let me fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, and I was, I was to the point where it's like, I get it. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> but we both very much enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, it, it, but it, you know, I, it's one of those things where it's like the trailer, the, not the first trailer, the first trailer was cool. The teaser. I like the yeah. teaser. The second teaser drove me up the wall because it's like, oh, look, it's the, it's Slimer. It's Walter yeah. Peck. It's, yeah. 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 It's the uh, international the trailer goes, was less yeah. uh, nostalgia y than the American full trailer. The American full trailer was very like, hey, yeah. these are the things you love. Yeah. But it, uh, it's, it, it's, I, I mean, and then now I feel weird because I, I'm, I'm on Letterboxd and okay. people have strong film opinions on Letterboxd. Yes, they do. And when I gave this, I think I gave this four stars. And that for me was like, I'm just like, I don't want people to come at me. I could probably give it five because the <laughs> way I, the way I watch a Ghostbusters movie <clears throat> and I realized this is the same way I watch Ghostbusters too. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, 12, I guess yep. was at 89. I would have been around, around 12. Yeah. Um, I went and saw it and I'm like, I don't know if I at 12 you have like filmmaking in mind. Right. Yes. yes. Or 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 other sure. people's opinions in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go and you're like, I get to go see the Ghostbusters. And yep. there they are. And wow, they did the Ghostbuster thing. Yeah. And then I left and I was like, great. So so now I feel bad. Like when I go see a Ghostbusters movie and I enjoy it, I'm like, oh boy, are people gonna come at me because I like it? Well, and then I, just, I guess I just don't care. Well, I, you know, I don't know if if you saw my like uh, spoiler free. Actually, no, let's okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did. I glad. Okay, I, I glad we got that. Let's just do the quick. Uh, we gotta go through our things here. We gotta say hello to the chat, and I gotta put the spoiler tag up because we're okay. gonna we gotta okay. we gotta get into it, and we'll give everybody a chance to get out before we get into into the nitty gritty of this thing um let's just say hello to the chat it's it's hopping on a monday night we got kate juan carlos zero cools thought it was awful uh, uh, uh all music fan cosmo listen all opinions are welcome to this by the way just as long as you aren't uh an a-hole about it or get into things that i don't know if you're like oh i hate this woke agenda if you get into that territory yeah you're out of here but if you don't like it and you think it sucks whatever that's perfectly fine um uh bc delorean and other movie cars uh let's see studio henge frankie rivera mo 2d alpha magnus hung wen cougar mcgillicuddy tony durbo dartherian sukiomi uh ashnod i haven't seen ashnod in a minute good to see ashnod uh, Riley, Bob, caught the death chills. Is that what you got? <laughs> got the death chill. Um, Doc O's collecting. Tree Shaker in the house. Good to see a Tree Shaker. Um, we've also got Mutagen Ooze. We've got Free Rain um, and and more. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. Uh, we are. This is our spoiler take right. uh, of it. So if you want a spoiler free version. Uh, I did that on Wednesday when the, the review embargo came up. So, spoiler alert! We're talking about the film. Uh, Frozen Empire. Uh, one of the strategies of waiting till Monday is we're now several days past when everyone could see it. Um, but if you haven't seen it yet and you don't want to be spoiled, go ahead and, and leave and then and then come back later. Also, 
please hit the like button. If you hit the like button, uh, more people see this thing. So we have 63 people watching right now. Everyone, if you can go and hit the like button on this video. And if you're watching it as a replay, hit the like button as well. It does help. Uh, John Norton is here uh, as Thank well. You. All right. Sorry, uh, Ralph, uh, what were you going to say? So your spoiler review uh, at the time you did it, uh, Stevie put it on and we were watching it. And the the uh, how about the that critics thumbnail, review, by the way? How about how about this bad boy right there? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's 46 percent by critics. The uh, uh, but at the time you posted that it didn't have the audience score up. So Correct. Stevie looked it up then. And at the time of that, we watched that it was like 84 percent. Yes. And it's still at 84 percent. Now, in that video, I was like, I have a feeling. It's gonna that be yeah. whenever because I think I think we had this on the books for today when I did that one, I think. And uh, I said, whenever Ralph and I do our, you know, spoiler full, you know, thoughts of the movie uh, screen geeks, um, I, I have a feeling it's going to be much higher as an audience score than the tomato meter score. Oh, man. I love I love that runtime. And now oh, 55. Mm. what a great runtime. Mm. So those good. characters too right <laughs> so um uh, and and so so far that rings to be true uh 84 over a thousand verified uh, ratings for the film and rotten tomato actually dropped a little bit 44 percent um but there's just i and and you mentioned it uh, as you're kind of going through your thoughts uh leading up to it but just something yeah. about these reviews that just don't connect for me and, and and that's why i don't get like this one right here from the observer in the uk the plot is pretty much a cut and paste duplication of the original film i might say that about afterlife as far as like the third yes. act yes but but, but what, is, what is copy and paste here yeah i don't know i don't know it's not a gigantic kaiju like in 2016 and yeah yeah they you know even even ghostbusters 2 with the statue of liberty they yeah. did not do a gigantic monster uh the monster in this the the big bad um grogu i forget the name um garak garaku you would know garak garak fudge hold on i got a pin of him here <laughs> you um, have a um it's like what maybe 10 feet tall like a 10 feet tall monster yeah, i mean he's big but he's not yeah. he's not uh, uh kaiju size yeah i mean the only copy and paste thing uh that i would say is and which i actually loved and i like this the reason why i like this movie more than afterlife is because it felt more ghostbustersy to me yes there was so many scenes i could have watched another hour of just people spouting bs ancient folklore garbage yes! out of books the the yes. i mean Patton oswald scene was great just because they're just it's it's dan Aykroyd and Patton oswald just yes. spouting this jargon that i don't know if it's historic i don't know if yeah. it's just all bs that they're making up but that's the stuff i loved about ghostbusters uh the scene in the jail cell hey the ghost the mayor wants to see you yeah uh, like where they just have like blueprints out and they're just spouting all this yes jargon. and i don't know if if dan Aykroyd is like pulling this stuff from real sort of folklore i think so. or, he what? knows his stuff dan Aykroyd the, can't you know that's what makes it that that's what makes it me wonder if it's a real thing that exists out there yeah not, you know and so that like listening to that stuff i'm like it makes me intrigued and it makes me want to like no, like is this stuff real do ancient sumerians really believe in this stuff? yeah uh it, it, like i feel like the cold god and the fire starters or whatever yeah. aren't a real thing fire masters but, yeah but somewhere in there he starts saying things about ancient civilization uh, ancient civilizations where i'm just like Oh, I kind of want to know more about that. <laughs> yeah, right. Keep, please keep talking for like 20 more minutes about this because that's what I want. There was a little bit of that in Afterlife. Um, it was, but it was kind of, but again, we already had, we already had the, the jail cell scene where they kind of went into Vince, yeah. uh, uh, um, you know, the Gozer worshipers, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. it was almost to your point, that was a copy and paste really when they're in right. the diner and they're kind of going through it. But this was like a whole new lore to explore. And I love the <laughs> yeah. library scene because I love the little animation of like, you yeah. know, telling the backstory of Garaka. Garaka is the name. Um, yeah. And the fire starters and that whole mythology and everything. And I agree. Can I. 
I think like Dan Aykroyd, he got to have himself a movie in this movie. I like yeah. he was he shined it. He was one of the the shine shining characters yeah. in this film. Like he was giddy throughout this whole thing. He it was, was like he was utilized how Ray should be utilized exactly. And he makes the most sense because when it comes to Ghostbuster stuff, there's there's a part at the beginning where the Ecto-1 drives up the street and past yeah. Ray's occult. Yes. And he just yes. longingly looks out the window. Yes. And it's like, that's exactly how Dan Aykroyd felt when they made 2016. Yep. He watched the, the Ecto-1 go by and was like wishing he could be there. Yep. And there's, there's a little bit of it. They give him a little bit of a, a meatier scene in Afterlife than the rest of the Ghostbusters. Yep. And in this, they're like, okay, listen we know you want to be in this. Yeah. So we'll make you kind of the Egon and Ray in one. So you'll mm-hmm. be anytime there's any of this stuff, jargon being thrown out there. Yeah. We'll make sure you're kind of involved with that. Um, and so I like that. It wasn't them trying to shoehorn in all the ghostbusters into this movie. Mm-hmm. It was, we're going to utilize Ray as Ray. Mm-hmm. We have a scene set up where we can utilize Vankman, which is what he does, yeah, which is sitting and doing experiments as yeah. in, in complete like BS, um, yes, uh, uh, stuff like that. And yeah. then Winston and his his role becoming sort of the head of Ghostbusters yeah. Yeah. HQ, mm-hmm. and, and they so they were nice. They they felt like they were part of the story organically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As opposed to the last one where they're just like showed up. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. So they felt, it felt more organic. Um, and, and I really, really appreciated that. Uh, Walter Peck, uh, when I saw the trailer, I'm like, Oh gosh, Walter Peck again. But yeah, it, it, it was kind of nice. It was, it was like, okay, you can set up this, the, the crappy mayor. Yeah. Um, and with like do a shorthand. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause as soon as you see him, you know, this guy hates the ghostbusters. Exactly. We haven't seen him in 40 years. You yeah. know, this guy hates the ghostbusters. Um, even in ghostbusters too, like the mayor was kind of pro ghostbusters and his right hand man was like anti ghostbusters. Yeah. Yeah. It- so it's nice. So if you want the mayor to hate the ghostbusters, he's the best person to get to do it. But I love that call on shorthand because it's true. I, I will say like, oh, how did he become mayor? That's kind of like whatever. That's a leap. I was like, I don't know. It's 40 years. He's a bureaucrat. Like he probably hangs around long enough to, to yeah. you know, function long enough to kind of get in that position. And to your point, you instantly <laughs> there's no in a movie where you're, you're keeping it under two hours. There's no backstory yeah. you need to add. You know, he hates yeah. the Ghostbusters. You know, he's hated yeah. them forever. So there's no. Yeah extra things you need to do there boom yeah. just get right into it um yeah and in today's world someone like that could be hired into office as we have seen in office. Um, yeah. so it, it was one of those things where it's like oh man okay like in the context of the movie it made sense because they were just flying through this stuff like you get through the scene where the family is chasing the the sewer dragon yeah and then like by the time you get to the part where they're in trouble it's like what, maybe 10, 15 minutes in. It's yeah. not very long in. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it, it keeps the pace going. And yeah. I mean, it's great to see Willie Matherton. I know he spent ages trying to shake the yes. whole character of of you know Die Hard and Ghostbusters and stuff, but mm-hmm. I'm glad he was like, All right, you know what? I'll embrace it. Yeah. <laughs> He's, yeah. You know. Um, which I give him credit for. I will say out of the actors, he was the, like there's a few that just kind of completely ignored the you know the fan interview section and he just walked right by um but uh uh but you know i i i do give him a lot but the thing is he could phone it in but there's uh especially on second watch um because you know the, the first the premiere night just all the, the excitement of everything but this yeah. like on the second watch like his acting like he was locked in to be the the a hole peck again and yeah. like there's just his looks and stuff i was like oh dang he's like he's still got it he's still got the the dickless energy <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah. uh so uh that i dug uh i love how it opened the whole opening sequence of the flashback 
and it's 1904 New York, and it pans down, yeah. and it's the firehouse. It's Hook and Ladder Eight yeah. with the the horse and buggy uh, firefighters. I love that. What? Is, okay, so let me ask you this because I just remembered this, and I thought like if there's any kind of weirdness, like where I'm just like, uh, I don't know, I don't think this is great as far as Ghostbusters lore goes. Yeah, is that the Hook and Ladder was built there specifically because it was a high sort of paranormal turbulent area no and they i were thought they the just protectors I, no because i think the or at least how i heard it was more because they put the containment unit there because that original cross rip happened there it is like a weak point between the two worlds yeah. and so they kind of have to keep that okay. there otherwise it could you know rip the two got it, got universes it. together um but to me i thought it was cool especially uh because uh, that morning of the premiere there was this joint thing between the actual fire station and and sony pictures where they you know they had mm. the, the firehouse all done up like frozen empire um but it was forced fire safety awareness um, so I, I did love the call out because it's it's been a working fire station for 100 whatever years. It was actually right. I didn't realize this, but Tony Taylor Toys, he uh, maybe I did know, but I forgot. But it was originally two two doors. It was almost like twice as long back then. So it was okay. a double fire station. And then when they had the Y in the roads, once cars came along, I think they cut it into just one thing so it was originally a double like it was almost like cool. a twin firehouse kind of um uh but still i i love that whole opening sequence because it was just cool it just yeah. kind of set it set the pace it was really fast and it set the whole fire starter uh or fire start damn it <laughs> fire uh masters <laughs> right. um and it was really creepy uh especially with the you know the little uh, turntable yeah. with the hand like it was it was a really cool opening sequence right it felt like i mean it's it's basically like the beginning of ghostbusters one just took it a little bit farther where you see the results but i like i like a cold open for the ghostbusters movies yeah um in ghostbusters 2 we have oscars buggy yep. Yep. you know it sets up everything mm -hmm. uh, and i really i really like that um uh that sequence was it, it yeah, I think it's there's a there's a similar sequence that opens up. God, what was it? Was it Shazam? Shazam two, mm -hmm. where th people are getting like turned to stone and stuff. Yeah. Um. So I'm like, okay, cool. So this is kind of like as far as we'll go for PG thirteen movies for kids that mm -hmm. can get scared is seeing people get frozen. Yeah. Um. Did you end up seeing it with your boys? Uh. Yes. Yeah, so we we all it saw it friday night and were they um, were they i feel like there was a kid sitting next to me um a family was next to me and the kid kept saying is that a good ghost is that a like the whole thing is it yeah, a good yeah. ghost that is a good ghost um is it too much do you think it was too much for your kids do they enjoy um, it? the only you know it was too much for them uh did you have that tarot card trailer before the movie why was that there i have no idea because in my theater it was packed. It was sold out. There were a ton right. of kids in the theater. That tarot, it scared me. Like all the grownups, yeah. like Colleen, uh, it was my dad and myself, were like, I don't want to see that movie. And I, I, I thought of all those kids in that theater, the boys, they like hid under our arms. Like that had no business being in. That was the scariest thing, I think. Of I mean, I, help, I guess it helps prep them for Ghostbusters, which is tame. I guess so maybe it's like a but it was yeah I was like why is this happening why is this trailer and it's like relentless it just keeps on yeah. going with yes it kept it monsters. was like creepier and creepier and creepier it's like why are they doing this um yeah but uh I think the one time they got and again I did a lot of prepping after seeing the movie I was like okay this is a more intense Ghostbusters movie um I just I kept preparing them. Hey, this is there's going to be some scary scenes, but kind of going over it's movies. It's not real. Um, and, you know, if it's really scary, you know, you, you can just, you know, I had my jacket. You can hide under the jacket. I'll, I'll tell you when it's you over count on the Ghostbusters. Um, and exactly. And, you know, they'll, they'll get them. Yeah, exactly. And Minions. There was some Minions trailer. So it was just so <laughs> the trailers for this thing were stupid. Um, yeah. 
uh, it, it just I, as I'm walking up, I'm just seeing all these kids. They have their blankets and they have their Slimer popcorn buckets. And then <laughs> let's show the most scariest trailer you could possibly show. Um, but uh, anyway, um, but the one that 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 scared them was the uh, the sequence where Garaka uh, is let loose and uh, Phoebe is separated from her body. That freaked out Alex. Was just like. Why, yeah. why would she do that? Why would she be dead, she essentially? Um, and so that was just like, well, you know, it's, she's going to be back in her body. She's separate. That was the one thing that freaked out my kids was when Phoebe became a ghost for, you know, those two minutes or whatever. Do you um, want to do me a big favor and vamp for a second? I'm gonna, absolutely. I need to. I need to grab some tissue. Absolutely, you're good. You're I, good. Can, I can still hear you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I plus just, in. I'm gonna plus in some thoughts from the chat while you do that, my friend. Um, I'll remove you so you can blow your nose in peace and just let me know when you're good. Um. Uh. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was Garfield, Minions, and Taro. But that that's a PG-13 horror movie. It was. I was scared. I was like, I don't want to see this movie because um, it was so creepy. It was so creepy. Um, uh, let's see. I, I will say it seemed more intense on preview night. I was more worried, or not preview night, but the premiere. And maybe because it was um, it was the AMC Lincoln IMAX one and the sound was really intense. Um, so it freaked me out uh, a lot. Oh yeah, the Garaka horn push. So I've, maybe it was just like a more intense viewing experience, um, and it hit harder. Um, but uh, but that's uh, it for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, dang it! I want a tall, dark, and horny plasma now. Also possessed. Ooh, possessed red ecto one. Absolutely. Um, it's not R rated, so they can show the trailer. But how the hell is that moving? I don't know. It was it was creepy as hell. Um, uh, but yeah, I, oh, see, we didn't get Beetlejuice, to, uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Um, that would have been more fun, um, to, to see in theaters. Yeah. I didn't get uh, Beetlejuice either. The, but yeah, we had, we had Planet of the Apes. Yeah. That, um, a fall guy and, uh, Garfield. Yep. Like it was real, like, kind of like, yeah, chill. And then Taro. Taro. <laughs> Taro, jeez Louise. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I uh, the the opening sequence I, I really dug, and then just going straight into the Ecto One chase was awesome. And I've heard some people say they didn't like the I got ghosts to bust gunner seat thing, but I thought that was fun. I thought it was a That's really like, fun. Is that car a toy? Chase. Is there a toy that has? I know like the turtle wagon has that. The classic. Yes. But it felt very sort of Hasbro toy. You'd think, which, but we don't have anything. Which, by the way, Jay, how excited were you that there was Hasbro toy commercials for Ghostbusters uh, in the movie? Well, uh, let's let's just talk about the, anything. Anything else you want to say about the car chase? But we do talk about that because that was freaking awesome. Um, I, I think I think the the sewer ghost is fun. The ghost yeah. here. I I have an issue with the movie. Um, okay. and not really. It, it's it's hard to talk about because I know that some less savory people bring this up about uh melody the ghost and stuff i had sure. different issues with that because with ghostbusters the weirdest thing for me about ghostbusters is what are these things ghosts of yes. what is slimer a ghost of yeah um and so you have this this legendary sewer snake dragon was it the staten island sewer something sewer gator or something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and so it's like so is that like is it a it's like a ghost as in that was a creature that died or is it stuff from other dimensions because they do talk about dimensional rifts and stuff yeah and so i'm like okay so they're just using the term ghost as like sort of a spectral being like it's not well, like it's not like slimer I, I, was a person that died well right? that's where that's why i kind of liked i i really dug the melody storyline um one because i it did kind of answer that question for me because uh because that kind of brought that discussion of how would you present as a spirit like how would you how would your matter you know uh, uh present itself after you die um and like how much autonomy do you have in that is it a representation of who you were when you were alive 
Um, and you know, like Slimer, I could if you know it's Jim Belushi or John John Belushi, not Jim Belushi. John Belushi. Ron Belushi. Jim Belushi is still with us. He's still he's still alive. But um, like you know, he's he was probably a gluttonous you know uh, person in real life, and however long it's almost like a golem kind of thing. Like maybe over like four hundred years of being a ghost, right. like that's what he devolves to. And then maybe the right. ones that are more monstrous, you know, they were either some creature from another dimension that died and is carrying over, or um you know uh again it was a person that maybe was a horrible person and i'm i'm fine with the the melody storyline mm -hmm. uh i thought it was i thought it was fine but it was just for me it was so weird like the scolari brothers look like cartoon characters mm -hmm. the only humanoid ghost we've seen is the librarian ghost who turns into a ghoulie monster yeah uh the ray's uh dream ghost <laughs> the the it's putting it nicely <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. ray's bj yeah. ghost so we're not that <laughs> i'm yeah. sure he slimed his sheets yes. um <laughs> right and then uh uh i mean what is the the cab driver is that just a zombie he was kind of a zombie <laughs> <laughs> okay and then then you have the egon. rules are loose okay <laughs> yeah yeah you have egon who's hey, egon like, was just yeah human ghost yeah yeah but egon doesn't talk obviously what oh jogger like the, jogger, the jogger the jogger the jogger yeah i guess so like there's you don't oh, see all a the lot of all of the uh, titanic. uh the titanic yeah better late than never so it's it's one of those things where it's like we've seen people ghosts but none of them have like talked yeah, the Scolari brothers who look like goblins, uh, yeah, <laughs> laugh and make noises and stuff. But so for me, it the melody threw me off. It's like, oh, it's just a flat out ghost that talks. And yeah. how many like the Ghostbusters bust into these places? No pun intended. They and they just take out these ghosts and trap them. Mm -hmm. Like, have they ever tried to like? have a conversation like hey listen yeah it's just like, like, instead of know, busting them can we have some yeah. ghostbusters therapy maybe or and ghost i know they therapy. set it up with the librarian ghosts they're like well maybe we should try to communicate first obviously they didn't have proton packs yeah. by then, <laughs> but it was uh, it was one of those things where i mean i don't know i just was like so i, I it's, my problem with the melody storyline is like for half of that whole storyline i was like so can they, could they have been like talking to these ghosts the whole time? Have they not <laughs> tried to do this to kind of get answers to see like if they're cool or not? Can yeah, they yeah. just ask <laughs> them to stop haunting what? the hotel instead of blasting <laughs> the shit? So it's like one of those things where I'm just like, okay, like I, by the time it got to, like halfway through, I'm like, okay, whatever. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I was just like, oh, are they gonna show him kiss? That's the only thing. And from that point on, I was like, oh, are they gonna okay, show so him kiss? So there's this this whole thing of like, uh, is it this kind of uh romantic thing? And I gotta admit, like both times I saw, I didn't track the the romantic tension between them. I thought she was just like she's lonely and this is a friend. It's, like I I didn't, but a lot of people have. I I I'm so I know I'm probably the outlier. I just yeah. didn't see the romantic angle of it so much i feel like every ghost must every ghostbusters movie has a romantic lead. through line it's usually but it just wasn't very explicit Peter and, and with dana it. and then in the 2016 everybody loves hemsworth so that's sure funny. yeah but there's there's certainly things there was um uh uh is it trevor is that finn wolfhard yes uh, yes him and uh lucky i think you know like i feel like that's part of ghostbusters and so since this was the only storyline where there's two people meeting and, mm -hmm. and sort of being on the same like wavelength i i, I kind of picked up on that um but it was it was it's one of those things where we're so used to a character wanting something more than what they have. Yeah. Um, BB gets Ghostbusters taken away from her. She's yes. more fascinated by she's like Ray. Yes. She's like Ray or Ego yes. in the sense where she's curious and wants to know more about it. Yeah. To the where and then she's also a teenager. And I know yeah. being teenagers is a very confusing time. Yeah. And she she's looking for something more. She's trying to connect with something she yes. can't connect with her family she's yes. not allowed to be a ghostbuster yeah and so you have this person that comes into her life yes um that has a similar sort of worldview and one of my favorite things about that whole thing is she can't be with this person 
um, because they're on different dimensional exactly, planes. Yes, yes. It's it's like Lydia from the original Beetlejuice. She'd yes. rather be in the world yes. of the undead. Yes. Because she doesn't she doesn't sort of uh, gel with yeah. the world of the living. Yeah. So Phoebe, I like that storyline with Melody, and she takes it to the point where she's like, "I want a taste of it. I want a taste yeah. of." I've been ghost busting for was it two years now? Yeah. And it's in her blood. Egon is in her blood and she's looking for something more mm -hmm. to the point where she's like, I'm going to just do this thing. Yeah. Which is very ill advised. Like, yeah, I was just like, what are you doing? This is a but, horrible idea. <laughs> but what I like about her character yeah. is she's smart and she knows how to do the right thing but yes. she keeps messing up throughout the movie yeah like she's Which not a, but a teenager like, does teenagers make stupid decisions yeah yeah she blows up the 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 lion she yeah. you know the thing with the with the with the sewer snake and stuff like she's constantly messing up and as a kid you just want to be like validate you want validation yeah. and and she just keeps getting pushed aside and so you have this ghost show up and the ghost usually says, oh, people run away from me at this yeah. point. And she, that's not her. So she's able to connect with someone. So yeah. I like that storyline a lot. Um, when she did split off her her, her essence, I guess, into the splitting the spirit, two, yeah. I did not see that coming, which was no. nice. Um, I did see that Melody was going to be a bad guy. I, oh, that, yeah. I kinda, that was oh, kind of, yeah. I kind of got that. And also the, the matches was, was mm -hmm. for me. I was like, okay, the matches are going to come into play yeah. with the fire yeah. master, and stuff, yeah. which is, which is fine. But Phoebe doing that and splitting herself up, I was like, that threw me off. And I was like, okay, this is really interesting. Yeah. This is really interesting. Um, because, you know, you, 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 you see the ghostbusters want to bust ghosts. Yeah. Obviously you never see a ghostbuster be like, I wonder what it's like. Mm -hmm. and her conversation with ray about do you yes. ever wonder what kind yes. of ghost you would be every day of um, my life yeah and and it, it's it's like perfect i love yeah. that because it's yeah. like listen like um i think it's good for kids to know mm -hmm. that no matter what you're thinking and no matter how hard you get kicked down by everybody everybody tells you you're wrong there's yeah. gonna be people out there who um understand you Mm -hmm. who commiserate with you who know that you also wonder what it's like to be a ghost yeah which is a crazy thing yeah um that's that's what i that's what i liked about the the melody storyline is it allowed phoebe to explore this space that yeah. even i'm like I, I i'm i just it's it's a fascinating thing as as a um as as a non-believer in in ghosts and in, in the afterlife in general the way you would get me to believe it is on like a scientific level yeah. of just like, okay, you know, a body has energy and, um, and the molecular bonds of that, you know, could go beyond whenever you, you die or whatever. Right. Cause we're all just made up of matter from, you know, the universe, uh, from the big bang, you know? So, uh, like that's the angle that I find fascinating. And so I think for me, like I was kind of feeling like I was in Phoebe's shoes, just like, Oh, this, now I get to actually somebody is actually listening to me and mm -hmm. I, I'm getting to explore this space and learn from this ghost that I haven't really been doing because I've just been busting ghosts. Right. Do you think Melody should have been some sort of puppet creature? Do you think No, I, I dug it's I dug it as, just a person? as a human. I, I liked yeah. it because again. Phoebe's clearly looking for somebody. That's why they had the chess scene. And she thought like, oh my God, you know, uh, Egon's yeah. back, Grandpa Egon. Um, but it isn't yeah. that. But she kind of fills that space of, because right. in the first movie, Phoebe's a lonely person and she finds Egon's ghost and that helps her get through it. And, you know, that's from the grandfather's perspective. And this one, whether it was a, a, lo a coded yeah. love story or just a friend, whatever it is, it's still a relationship that a teenager would have, whether it's romantic or just having a friend um, mm -hmm. that kind of helps you grow as a person. Um, and she's young and naive and that person took advantage of it, but still, you know, helped that ghost move on to, to whatever is next. Um, 
and I I found it really compelling um, personally. And I get it; other people don't like it, but I I thought it was interesting in doing something different. Um, but it Not wasn't copy and paste. It, 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 <laughs> exactly, Not. and this one was like copy and paste. Like, what are you talking about? And and again, I don't. And people are saying it, it derailed the movies. Like, it didn't take up that much of the movie. Like, it, by right. percentage of time, it was just one. It was Phoebe's Phoebe's story arc of she's she's not she's uh not quite an adult and she's still kind of coming to her she's it's a coming of age time for and, her and, and she's figuring and herself out it, because of it she unleashed karaka which is yeah again she keeps messing up and yeah. i kind of like that um and know, it, i know and it was very the split spirit is very real ghostbusters that's absolutely something that would happen in a real ghostbusters episode yeah. See, I haven't seen a single episode of Real Ghostbusters. You should, because it's pretty good. Um, I know, I know. And they, they're on sale digitally, and I'm like, maybe I should grab... <laughs> yeah, like, you get a season on... Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those things where it's just like... It's something new that a Ghostbuster's up to. I've never seen a Ghostbuster. The only the only ghost we see them talk to is, like, Vigo. Yeah. Um, and, and Gozer. Uh... But I don't know. It, it wasn't. The, there's there's a billion characters in this movie. Yeah. Like, and if you have a problem with like one storyline, I, I mean, you have so many other storylines to look forward to. Um, like, uh, like just podcast and Ray hanging out. Doing I love. The cult, I get the doing the doing. They the, had that what little. The, they had that great little moment in Afterlife, and then they got like more time in this one, and I think it it yeah. still worked. Yeah. Um. The. And people are saying it's not funny. Like even um, I love the uh, what was the the dead husband's name? It's like Harold. Beep for the beep for the nice man. Like that. That was really <laughs> yeah. funny. Um, and uh, and yeah. No, I okay. So that's one of the things people aren't liking. But that I, that I really enjoyed. Um, the other one that people hate is the um, Kamal Nanjani uh, fire master character. And to me, he just fit in that Lewis Tully, um, yeah. uh, Janos, uh, just like some Brando that got sucked into this Brando thing. Brando got sucked into the story. Yeah. yeah. And, and he was probably the funniest character. Yes. I loved it. I thought I, I, I and people makes, saying it was not funny or out of tone. I was just like, well, here, he's funny. I, let me let me say this about the original Ghostbusters, and this yeah. might sound blas blasphemous. The original Ghostbusters film is more of a sci-fi movie than it is a comedy. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 actors who are in it are comedians. Yes, and their characters are funny but they don't say funny things mm -hmm. uh i think bill murray's venkman is the funniest because he's yes. the every moon he's the every man he's a cynic yeah and he uses his wit to deflect any of the seriousness of the situation mm -hmm. egon uh harold ramus a great comedian mm -hmm. doesn't have jokes it's yeah. just he's a really quirky character it's mostly quirky characters there aren't jokes yes in Ghostbusters, mm -hmm. and this movie, I feel it's the same. But, but oh, Lewis Tully, Lewis Tully, it like it's yeah. Rick Moranis playing the nerd stereotype, and there's also a lot of co yeah. comedy in Lewis Tully's that, performance. That's that that's totally exactly different than everybody else. Alan Johnny does in this. Yes, exactly, he's, exactly. He plays it funny because he's such he he's thrust into this thing where it's like this is ridiculous, but he's also kind of a a con man a little bit. Yes, um, yeah. So that's inherently funny because he's that's not how real people are. Yes. Um, but for the most part, like Paul Rudd is just charming and funny just through mm -hmm. his delivery and stuff. Yeah, he's Paul really, Rudd. like going yeah. around telling jokes. Ghostbusters answer the call, put in jokes. Yes. Yeah. And um it it might have been like detrimental to the story mm -hmm. i feel like when it comes to ghostbusters uh when dan Aykroyd and harold ramus wrote it they wanted to make a movie about ghosts mm -hmm. and franchising and what would it be like to, to yeah. you know do this thing but we're gonna have comedians be in it so that felt the same way it felt like they were they're mostly focused on 
here's where the Ghostbusters are at now after mm-hmm. Afterlife. Here's what Ghostbusters, here's the trouble they're into. And we're just going to inject it with funny people. Like Patton Oswald has a few jokes in his scene, mm-hmm. but he's just such a quirky guy that when he's spouting this jargon, he's able to give it a little flair mm-hmm. and that makes it fun. Yeah. You know, if it's just, or even even talk. like Egon is so deadpan that that's, that's where the laughs come from. It's yeah. like I you know I had half a uh, we had half a slinky once and the, and they straighten it. Or I collect yeah. spores, molds, and fungus. Like it's not yeah. a joke. It's just he's playing the character so well that yeah. you get a laugh from it. You know, um, yeah. and uh, or you know the the I think the biggest laugh of the first movie. Uh, you know, everything was fine until the energy group was shut off by Dickless here. It's like, is this true? Yeah. Yes, it's true. This man has no tick. And it's just like, yeah. it's so like, it's subtle, but absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah. And, uh, but, you know, to me, the, the fire pole scene, it's very divisive. Like, Cone Killer Refuser hated it. I mean, I guess didn't like it, fell flat. Which um, one? Where was Camille in the full costume coming down? Yes. Oh, I thought that was great. The whole theater, both times, the whole theater, the one with the cast and crew and just the normal sold out theater. He got like, it, like the whole theater laughing. It's a, it's a tension breaker. Yes. It's the Garaka Garaka. I'm going to ever going to get it right. Um, is bearing down on like 10 ghostbusters. Yes. And that's, it's bad. Yeah. You have 10 ghostbusters and the 10 ghostbusters can't stop it. Yeah. You have like, you have like four kids, yeah, four original you got the new Ghostbusters. Gen and OGs, yeah. You got all these Ghostbusters, and they can't stop this thing. And it's like, man, this is really dire, and the Ghostbusters are doomed. And all of a sudden, all sound drops out, and you just hear the scraping of him <laughs> on the suit. He wanted to go down the pole so bad. Now he's like doing it to save the day, even though he's been reluctant this whole time. It just it, it's it, it's a tension breaker yeah and i think it's i think it's funny i think it's uh i think it's well done because it's like it gives you it gives you out of that moment where the ghostbusters are all just going to get obliterated because they're all getting frozen yeah um and you just hear them come down it gives you time to kind of pause be okay this is okay it's good for the kids yeah the kids the kids they don't need to have like it's not like the tarot you know, mm-hmm. yeah, Camille Nagiani halfway through the tarot trailer sliding down a pole in armor, <laughs> everybody would laugh because it's 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 kind of breaking the tension a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's it's the perfect time to do that sort of thing. And I, I thought, and, but I funny. love that it's just like and then it, and then again he's just like he takes the thing and it he can't light it because the whole because again the whole movie that he has that that lighter that Zippo lighter going nonstop. Yeah. So it's it's yeah, hilarious that that had fuel. a consequence. Yeah. Um, okay, so could you? Uh, Monsters from Beyond says, "Wasn't that pole cut?" Here's the thing I noticed in this movie: mm-hmm. there are two fire poles. Yes, there's, and yes. I was watching, I was rewatching Ghostbusters one. There are two fire poles in there. Oh, oh I yeah, reactions. The, the <laughs> I don't know how to turn those off. Just uh, two, just two fire poles. <laughs> so they're the two fire poles, uh, and they, uh, <laughs> um, and they cut the just the bottom section off mm-hmm. of the one. Uh, yeah, it seemed like a, a mid of it or something. It wasn't the whole yeah. fire pole or whatever. Right. It was just a part right. of it. I feel it. like you could still slide down the line. Yeah. yeah. My only thing with the movie is what was the point of the copper proton pack? Oh, because that's that's finally that that, that allowed uh, him not to turn the beams into ice. Okay. Because remember, she she went and like basically uh, modified the proton pack. Um, and then coated all of the cyclotron elements in the copper or, or, or bronze. Okay. Um, and so when she comes out, I think it's a real, it's kind of a badass scene. It's a practical effect. Cause I've, I don't know if you've been watching the Savage uh, like movie videos, but um, so when she comes out and the cyclotron doesn't have its cover on and it's just like sparking yeah, yeah. as she comes out, I think it's a really cool scene. Um, but her, that stream with the, the copper, or, or bronze change is the only like he can't stop it um and right. that allows you know uh okay uh, to... the fi- yeah fire master and and phoebe to, <laughs> okay. to take him on because that whole montage of her breaking down that stuff i swear my brain went shut down with all the <laughs> jargon and i was just <laughs> staring at what they were doing yeah yeah, yeah. i'm like oh cool they're actually like doing science stuff yes i i i thought it was cool i loved it because again i just there's um 
you know, Phoebe is the Spangler analog. Right. She's kind of filling in that role, but she's, she's a kid. So she's growing up and stuff like that. And, but I love that it looking at it through her, her eyes, it, instead of say, you know, Vankman um, or, or Ray, like you're kind of getting Egon's or perspective of how they would approach yeah. things. So it's more, it's more nerdy. It's more scientific. It's more, um, you know, uh, Phoebe, it doesn't interact with other people like a, a normal human being would. Um, and so I, I loved it. I love that that whole thing. Um, my confirmation of the OG Ghost was never went back to the library. I love that. Okay. I love that Sky was still there. I know it's a whatever, but yeah, yeah. That was one of those things where I'm like, okay, here's the thing. Have that guy in it, great. That's uh -huh. great for the fans because it doesn't matter because you need the, the head of don't. the library yeah. to you need a character there anyway. Yeah, so exactly. Might as well the guy's still around, use him. Yeah. Um I didn't like the library ghost. Yeah, that was you didn't need it. It was it that felt a little forced, especially when it did the 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 scare. Yes. Like I if, think they if just, walked just walked by and it was there. And, he, and yes. it went, it was just there. Oh, yeah. Fine. But I did like the uh the the statue of the lion coming to life that I was cool that possess i love possessor i thought possessor yes was possessor cool. was awesome and i love that the lion came to life because i remember as a kid sitting in the theater mm -hmm. when it first pans down to the lion yeah i was afraid it was going to come to life because it was a ghost yeah because because when i went into ghostbusters as uh was 84 i would have been i don't know i kind of gotta do math <laughs> um I was like seven years old. Um, I knew I was seeing Ghostbusters. I was amped to see Ghostbusters. And when it panned down to the line, I'm like, I got tense because I'm yeah. like, oh no. It's, it, it, it's music. the music too. It's like, yeah. nah, nah, nah. it's like, you know, <laughs> it tees it up so, so well. Uh oh. Okay. Um, but I, I, I thought that was. And it was intense. Like that was yeah. like when the lines bearing down on Phoebe and they're trying to get the proton pack to work over. It's a really intense scene. Yeah. Yeah. I, I that worked for me because it was one of those things where it's like I always wondered if that line would ever come to life. Yeah. And we got to see it. But then with the with having the 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 librarian go there, I was like, oh, it's just one too many. Yeah. It's like yeah. one too many. Yeah. Yeah. And then the oh. um I also, but I I love all the things he possessed because the the Ecto one getting possessed. That's a that's it was an idea in Ghostbusters two. They didn't ever they cut, um, and it was in real Ghostbusters as well. Um, but Possessor taking over the Ecto one and the lights turning red. It was a brief moment, but I freaking love that scene. I I was kind of bummed that something didn't happen during that scene, that it kind of wanted to happen. Okay, what did you want to happen? I wanted so possessor jumps into the Ghostbusters sign first before yes. jumping into the Ecto one. Oh. I was like, I was as soon as it happened, like, oh, is the ghost gonna be like an animated like yeah. ghost from the sign gonna pop out of the sign? And then it went into the Ecto one. I'm like, oh man. Here's the thing. But that if, was if answer the call didn't happen and that wasn't the the big, yeah. you know, yeah. kaiju, the whole crux the uh, climax yeah. of that film they would have done it but i think with it already being done and answer the call i think it would have been too it's already been done just, right? uh, this, i don't like rewriting movies i like they worked sure. hard on it for years and they presented yeah. it how they want to present it but what if as the sign was laying flat on the ground the ghost popped up looked around and then possessor jumped into okay. that one okay like that's right, that's little, what i was thinking little, yeah just a little bit but the echo one with the with the lights turning red i'm like Oh, where is this going? Yeah. This is kind of cool. But yeah. it's essentially just to get the Ecto one out so that Garaka could come in. And yeah, he, he then took over the paper and then yeah. Like the possessor was, you know, there. I wanted Possessor to be a good guy, but it was set up that Garaka was controlling them all. Controlling yeah. everybody. Yeah. Um yeah. so um yeah. And so uh and but I I, I again uh where I that I I plus it in how he died yeah here we go um but then i love he just keeps jumping uh he he takes over the proton pack which is a scary scene that's at some people are saying like is that really fire if he's moving i was like i don't care i, I it was nice i was like okay he's he's gained enough control to be able to actually maybe be effective in this firefight 
um, where he saves them. Also love that, you know, Gruberson, you know, basically would die for this person that isn't his own kid. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, but then he goes into the pizza <laughs> and I absolutely love Slimer coming in, blah, 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 you know, cookie, cookie yeah. monster in the pizza and then takes off. I freaking love that scene. And it's like, yeah. I know him. I thought that was great. And that was funny. Yes. <laughs> it was funny. Slimer again, like felt kind of shoehorned into the movie. Like, here's the thing. There's Walter Peck, Slimer, the library ghost, uh, the dude from the library. Uh, uh, there's there's a lot of stuff yeah. in here from 84. And I kind of wish the library ghost wasn't there. That would have been okay. But I mean, eh. maybe just not as such a big part. Yeah. Maybe in the background or something. I don't know. Um, but Slimer being in there and me being like, oh boy, it's just, you know, Slimer again. Um, but it made sense in that moment. And I love that moment where Slimer ate the pizza. I love yeah. the pizza was alive. Um, yes. what I have seen of like the Ghostbusters toys, mm -hmm. like a possessed pizza would be something you would get in the nineties as a toy. Oh, I know if, if there, is there a possessed pizza toy? No, we're not getting Jack squat for this movie. So, but, but one of the, one of the people that make the custom ghost, mm -hmm. uh, the, yeah, he's the, here. Tony Taylor toys. Yeah. Tony. I guarantee you can design a possessed pizza toy. Absolutely. A uh, ghost like sidekick for, you know, and it would be mm -hmm. great. And I feel like um, I don't, people keep saying, Oh, it's like a, it's a, like a live action, real Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But to me, a possessed pizza sounds like something that would be in that show. Um, yeah. And, and the fact that Slimer just ate it was mm -hmm. great. Yes, I loved it so yeah, Tony, much. Tony, I'm Tony. You can probably picture it in your head. Like, what's the what's the toilet that is possessed? Here's some flush. Yeah, here's some flush. Um, kind of has a resemblance to the possessed uh, uh, trash bag. No, that too. That was great. Yeah, they're chasing a trash bag. It didn't have eyes or anything, but yeah, if it was the '90s, it would have had eyes. Yeah, uh, the best. Well, so we did Ghost get Busters a possessor, too. a possessor toy. Uh, with but it's like a little stretchy kind of companion ghost that doesn't really do much more than yeah. that. Yeah, but I feel like there should be a possessor toy line or a possessor pack where mm -hmm. it comes with a trash can or yeah. a trash bag, but the trash bag has eyes that pop out. Yeah, sure. And yeah, a you, you squeeze who, it. It's a trash bag. You squeeze it. Maybe the eyes pop yeah. or something. Yeah, and then like the pizza, you you lift it and it's got stringy cheese that mm -hmm. makes the mouth. Yeah. And you, you pepperoni eyes, yeah. like it seems. I feel like Possessor gave us so many things. Yes, that uh, Tony Taylor. I don't know if you make stuff for Ecto ones, but I mean, if you gave us a bag with like red headlights in it, mm -hmm. I'm sure every Ghostbuster fan would like to turn their Ecto ones yeah. into possessed Ecto ones. Yep. No, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Slimer eating lad. Uh, the Kenner toy came with a pizza that he could eat right. a bitten piece of pizza. Um, would have liked to see uh, Slimer Slime Peter again. Bill Murray probably like, nope, I ain't doing that. Uh, yeah. be my guess there. Um, yeah, and Slimer being it's just it's a nod to real Ghostbusters, like Slimer Another in this thing canon, just Slimer hung out and just lived in the firehouse. Like another thing I which loved. was in Ghostbusters 2 as well. Sorry, yeah. On. This is what I loved. That the third act is a haunted house movie, it's except the haunted house is yeah, the, is firehouse. the firehouse, yeah. Yeah. Like, what else do you want? Yeah. It's the Ghostbusters standing off at the firehouse. Yes. The third act takes place in the firehouse. Yeah. That hasn't happened before. No. It I mean, happens it, at a museum. Not film. Yeah. But Dana's yeah. apartment. It happens, uh, you know, at the farm. Yeah. And wherever Ghostbusters just. Uh, the the like museum, the art museum. Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's like, I'm like, is this is going to be like Home Alone or Straw Dogs. Mm -hmm. But at the ghostbusters firehouse are you kidding me i'm mm -hmm. like they've got their the ghosts are coming to them and they've got yeah. a place full of equipment mm -hmm. and i'm like this is gonna be great uh they probably got stuff hidden all over that place in yeah. the labs that they can totally take out the the big bad mm -hmm. and pete comes in unfortunately they shouldn't have put that in the trailer of yes it kind of took away all it's it took away all of that yeah but he comes in 
And what happens? He kicks open a hidden shelf. Yeah. But it's booze. And yes, his, I love line, his line, does anybody else want a drink of courage or whatever? Yeah. And I'm like, that's a funny line. And that's it a is. very Pink Venkman line. Yes. And I don't know if Pink Venkman is known as a drunk, but like but I he drinks like he drinks in he has the scene of you know call it uh let, call it fake call it karma right uh where, right. you know where they're, they're changing you know i think it's the same probably the same booze but um, it's so funny because that's yeah. so pete vinkman because yes ray knows where all the stuff is ray hides a proton pack in his motorcycle yes, yes. you know ray's got stuff hidden everywhere yeah and that's pete vinkman to a t his number yeah. one priority as soon as he gets in is to have a drink yeah and, yeah. he, and he's and he's and he's hit it there for years and he's kept that in mind he knows yep. it's there i thought it was great um I, I don't really have a lot of notes for this movie um because i thought it was just yeah fun. what's your thoughts on the ghostbusters lab i i freaking loved all of that oh the aquarium yeah as, like as a james bond fan having like the ghostbusters having a, a Q, Q. you're right yeah it is a Q division and yeah. he's british and yes. he looks like and he looks like the egon from the real ghostbusters yes yes with the glasses and the, yeah. and the the blonde hair yeah um i thought he was great james at a caster he was great he's funny yeah but it's not one of those things he's not like a goofball scientist he fits in yeah. the ghostbusters world yes and that's what i liked about this is you start putting in goofy people and then you have ghostbusters 2016 yeah exactly. it's, just, it's all comedy yeah yeah, yeah. which again, yeah. i i laughed i thought it was a funny movie but you're right it didn't it didn't he's dry and sarcastic but he's a different kind of yes. scientist than egon and ray yes and it it, it makes me want another one more than afterlife made me want another one mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i wouldn't mind let's get him what's his character's name the, oh, the fudge. i forget or let us know in the chat him camille um that's the that's the yeah, i love that logo too my friend brandon made patches of those um so him kumail let's get pat oswald and then find a winston type of fish out of water mm -hmm. to be like okay Winston, the family, the Gubersteins, the Gubersteins, the Gubermans, the the Gru the Grubersons. But the he Gruber even says like it's, slash... it's that's not a good name. It's Spanglers, you know. I like that. Yeah. So let's get the Spanglers. You're at the hook and ladder. Mm -hmm. They're at the firehouse. Let's have Winston be like, we're gonna set up a second Ghostbusters franchise in New Jersey or sure. Los Angeles. Yeah. Get Kumail. Get everyone set up in this movie to go do that, and then yeah. follow them. Mm -hmm. Follow them because it's also going to be a new struggling franchise trying to get built. Mm -hmm. And just like, let's, let's, let's get more ghostbusters. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be the same people. It doesn't have to keep on going. We got two ghostbusters movies with the original cast mm -hmm. ghostbusters one and two. We have two ghostbusters movies with the afterlight cat afterlight mm -hmm. cast. Mm -hmm. Um, let's get two more let's follow a new set of ghostbusters i think it's sure. time to like it kind of two movies winston kind of set it up that way at the end right he's like you know things are going whatever and we're here to solve for it blah 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 like i i i dug how it in like to me what i loved about the film maybe the most is the runtime but also it was just like it was just a movie and it had a story and it had a beginning middle and end and but it wasn't like I, I think we're all kind of worn out with the MCU of just like, oh, and now we're expanding to this larger yeah. episodic like this is just part one. And we have 15 more movies to resolve the story and, and it's all some huge universe, but it's still teed it up to like to your point, finally do the Ghostbusters franchise, you know, everywhere kind of thing. Um. Yeah. So I, I I really dug that. Um, just uh, just wrapping up some of, uh, that. My favorite one of my favorite jokes, and it's a dad joke, but where you know he's showing the possessed items, and he's like, "This one's fascinating. It's a grandfather clock possessed by a dead grandfather." And I just I really I, yeah. like just those. That's a good Ghostbusters joke. Just like kind of deadpan. Right. Just it was. I I really love that joke. Um, I, I I think I, I think I'm ready for more. This made me want more. Yeah. Um, because it's finally like I've been waiting for it with Star Wars. Like I'm just ready for something new. Yeah. Let's get past, let's get beyond Jedi versus the Empire. Let's do something different. 
Um, and I feel like now's the chance to kind of just go and have Ghostbusters adventures. Yeah, exactly. Just have Ghostbusters. Uh, I love this, Allison Troy. Those ghosts are already dead. Don't make it worse by making them get busted in New Jersey. <laughs> I say, I say, do if there's a thing, if there's like, do Ghostbusters West Coast. Mm -hmm. Let's bring them, bring them into LA. Yeah. You could do stuff with with Hollywood, uh, with you know, yep. like Dead Starlets or you know, there's there's all kinds of history in Hollywood, yeah. and I guarantee you that there's some weird ass sort of mm -hmm. folklore with yeah. like some of these old Art Deco buildings that've been around forever. I yeah. guarantee you, absolutely there's some stuff. So yeah, um, um, I'm ready. Let's do let's let's do Ghostbusters and pairs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the new team gets two Ghostbusters movie, and you can hand it off to the next or, team. Or you do the damn TV show, which I've been saying would work great so for so long, yeah. um, and then you have a big movie or whatever. I don't care. Like to me, to your point, it's just like just have a Ghostbusters movie, and if it's like this, I'm I'm good. Like I'll have a good time. Um, uh, Dartherian's critique here: give me a big bad with personality. Um, I, I I understand the critiques that Garaka didn't really have much to say right. or whatever. There's a um, looming presence. Yeah, which I'm fine with. And and yeah, sure. Next one, do do uh do boogeyman or whatever. I don't know. Like there's a lot of great bads from the the real Ghostbusters, uh <laughs> Ghostbusters yeah. Sheboygan. I love that. Um but uh but anyway, uh let's see. Um let's 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 talk about how the film did to see if we'll get more uh Ghostbuster movies uh brian no, brink sure. uh i i know you're here oh um, he's got a does he have, have, a, have a chart we have to chart this though uh there's plenty of websites that chart box office success um but it opened to a domestic opening of 45.2 million it uh, exceeded projections for the weekend mm -hmm. um uh with 16.4 world uh uh international so it has a worldwide total currently of 61.6 million uh, dollars. Uh, its budget, I believe, is a hundred million dollars. So it's going to have to do. It's doing a little bit better than Afterlife. Um, it's going to do a bit. I could more see the word of mouth Afterlife. of this being better than yeah, Afterlife. As I well. agree. I agree. Um, plus, there's just I know there's that King Kong movie, and and I know you're a kaiju guy, but that movie is just not doing anything for me. Oh, you're excited? <laughs> I the, okay, I all the, right. I got the bucket. I got the bucket when I saw Ghostbusters because I knew how, it how are you feel, are you my... excited for that movie? Like oh, Godzilla really? minus one was so good and like an incredible film. I'm just yeah. Like, how do you go back to legendary after that? Right, Godzilla exactly. Minus one was amazing. Ah, oh, so good. Holy cow! Yeah. It was so good. And now we have King Kong with a with a robot arm, and it's like <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to try to shift gears in my head to get to that <laughs> point. But I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna okay, see all it, right. and Jorge okay. and I will probably do a kaiju podcast Good. for it. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but um, yeah, I got a bucket and I got the cup with the Godzilla on top nice. while I watch Ghostbusters. But yeah, now I actually I for the first time have a little trash bucket for my desk. Oh, very nice, very nice. I mean I, it's uh, Godzilla and King Kong in pink. Like, how could I not have that? You know, he's a cool looking Godzilla. Yeah. Um uh, King Kong with optional bumblebee fisting action. <laughs> so weird. It's so weird. Um, I'd like to fist him. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, look at this. <laughs> it looks great. It looks great. Uh, I'm late. I'm sure to talk about it. I like the storyline of Phoebe and the ghost the best. I, I really liked it too. Um, that's one of the divisive elements of, of this film for people. Um, Kong got the Infinity Gauntlet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Allison, are we all coming back here on Monday in a few weeks to talk about Tarot, the big family movie of late spring, early summer? <laughs> yes, I'll be here. Um, can we just talk a little bit? I wish I brought it down here. Just the popcorn bucket action for movies now. Is is it is it gone too far? We had the Dune bucket, which was also a sex toy. Um, and and uh, uh, like there's so many great Ghostbuster ones. I missed out. They sold out in the AMC Lincoln in New York the cool trap with like the purple right. light thing. I I would really like one of those, and maybe I'll try. I'm sure you can get your hands on one. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Um, I don't need another Ecto One popcorn bucket. I got one with Afterlife, but I did the get Slimer. I did get the Slimer because uh, 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 Cinemark. That's the one we usually go to. It has For a little... you, also a sex toy. <laughs> no, 
Oh, wow. That's why. I don't think I could use it as that. Um, but uh, uh, the it's a really fun popcorn book. I got to say, yeah. there was just this element of living my best kid life where I had a Slimer that I could eat the popcorn out of. Translucent plastic, right? Yeah, translucent green. So so with popcorn in it, it looks like it should. Yes, it looks exactly. Like it looks like Slimer the- is eating the popcorn. Yeah, I was just I was like I had I had a shit eaten grin like just you know watching this movie with my son. Is but that then the, so? Is that popcorn bucket perfect for all like your loose extra Ghostbusters parts? Maybe, but so I've slowly been I've picked up a few different weird popcorn buckets and I have them kind of above the fridge in in our, our kitchen. Um, oh so that's where it is right now. Going out other. into the common areas. That's. That's bad news. Well, they been so you know. I think I've, I have the Avengers in game one, and uh, I had an Infinity Gauntlet uh, cup, and I've got the mini puff bowl from last time. I've got the Batman head mask thing, um, and I've got a Mary Poppins umbrella. <laughs> Great. And then, uh, and then I added the the Slimer. Um, but uh, but I've seen people have the trap with the the purple thing, and they put the slimer inside it, and it lights the whole thing up. It looks really cool. So I, I gotta oh. try and find that trap. Yeah, you gotta get that. Um, but then the other thing is that they had the Ghostbuster ICs there, so it's like this cool Ghostbusters translucent cup with you get the green. I don't know what they called it, but it was green icy, and it was really it changes tasty. colors of the cup. Yeah. Uh, and, and so that's, I was just there with my, my Slimer buck popcorn bucket and my, my green Ecto greens, you know, icy. And I was just like, this is peak. This is peak. Cause living. Stevie, Stevie, Cause I like getting ICs at the movies. Stevie asked me if I wanted the ghostbusters. icy. I said, yeah. hey, whatever. Uh, so that's how much I cared about ghostbusters going into this movie. Yeah. I got, the godzilla stuff nice i got the godzilla bucket <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. i did not care but yeah. now i'm like oh man that would have been cool to have but i'm, I'm glad i got my, my yeah my well i mean it's, it's the movie kaiju is your yeah, thing yeah. so it makes sense it makes sense yeah yeah um and this is the perfect like next to my desk trash bucket yeah it is that's a good trash bucket size right there <laughs> so it comes in handy so um, but I, I will say there's so many things for ghost. I was like, I can't have all of them. Like there's a firehouse tin. There's an ecto. There's several different types of trap uh, popcorn. Buckets. But what's great is you can use them as containers for like your card backs or something. Sure. You know, yeah. Yeah, like use them, you, you know, use them for stuff. Yeah. Like you don't have your card backs on display. I'm sure. Uh, no, now you can. In now stacks. You can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but anywho, uh, final thoughts here on the film. Uh, for me, um, I, I, I said it in my other video, but I, I, I freaking loved it. Is it a perfect movie? No. Is there things you can nitpick no about it? Movie yes. Is perfect. It, it, well, I mean, Back to the Future. I don't know. No. I don't know if the fire is going over uh, Marty's shoe in the effect. I don't know. It doesn't seem very perfect to me. Here's the thing, guys. Uh, nobody, nobody is setting out to make the perfect movie. People are setting out to make fun movies. And yeah. if you want a fun time, if you're a Ghostbusters fan, absolutely go see this at the theater because it was a really fun experience. Yeah. Um, uh, front to back, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I think what helps is that both Stevie and I were in the same headspace of mm-hmm. we can give a rip about this movie. Yeah. But I mean, it's Ghostbusters, so we're going to go see it. And then listening, hearing her laugh at the same parts that made me laugh. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's a good time. Like you can go into it cynically, I believe, and still come out on the other side, enjoying it. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're going into it thinking like you're going to see the greatest movie ever, you're not, but for me, I came out of it thinking it was my second favorite Ghostbusters movie. I, I'm just not the biggest fan of Ghostbusters 2. Um, mm-hmm. I like Ghostbusters 2. I think the score ruined Ghostbusters oh, 2. That score I think so the bad. movie would be so much better if, if somebody, I don't so know my where, I heard one. somebody come as like, Ghostbusters 2, you know, did something different with the score and was trying to, and I was like, that was mm-hmm. awful. It was so it's lately I've been thinking. I've been thinking who could have done the Ghostbusters 2 score in 1989? Who would have been the perfect person to do it? And he was sitting right there. He's got a song on the soundtrack. I think Danny Elfman scored. Oh. Post Beetlejuice. I feel like it, it, Beetlejuice was 88. 
Yeah. If Ivan Reitman would have been like, if we're not going to get Bernstein, let's get this guy. Yeah. To do Ghostbusters too. I think there's an Oingo Boingo perfect. on. You're right. Oingo Boingo was on saying. the soundtrack anyway. If you listen to what I want to do is find a, a version of Ghostbusters two that has no music. Yeah. And drop in his score to Scrooged because that also came out in 89 mm -hmm. and it's a supernatural comedy with yeah. Bill Murray. La, and I feel la, like, la, 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 which is, which is better than uh, <laughs> listen, boop, Randy boop, Edelman's boop, fine. Da, 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 da. <laughs> um, the score to this, can I just say real quick? Cause I talk yeah. about scores and I know a thing or two about scores. I like the score way more than afterlife because yes, it wasn't fully, as over it, the top. Yeah. Speaking of copy and paste, they copy and pasted Elmer Bernstein's score and dropped it into Afterlife. Yes. With this, they use specific notes. They use it was it was a new score using the same orchestrations. Mm -hmm. So you had like the theremin, you yes. had the piano, yes, and you did get the Ghostbusters theme, but at the right moment. Yes, exactly. And um, I think that this score by Dario Mar Marianelli, Martinelli, Marianelli. Um, was way more successful than the afterlife score. I mm -hmm. really, really thought the score was um, definitely didn't stand out as much as afterlife. So for that, that helped me as well. Yes. Enjoy the yes. movie a little bit more because it wasn't pulling straight cues from 84 yeah. and taking my mind out of it and being like, Oh yeah. no, this was when Pete yes. met Dana at her apartment. Why yes. am I, why is it making me yeah. think of a better movie? Yeah. So I, I thought the score was a lot better in this one. Um, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, I, I was curious your thoughts there. And it, it, at the time, I was like, well, I just I like that it wasn't the Ghostbusters 2 score, which I, I hate. And I like Ghostbusters 2 yeah. a lot. But that's the one yeah. thing that I would say really detracts from that film. Um, so I just like hearing those original scores. But on, on more views, like, yeah, it's just it's too. You're literally taking the sheet music from that first film yeah. and just having the, the orchestra play the same thing. Yeah. Whereas this one. It actually used the themes, but then applied them in a in a in a new way, or in right. you know. Right. Um, this should have been the score for Afterlife, correct? And yes. after, and then this score should have been like its totally own thing. But sure, I definitely appreciated the score more. Mm -hmm. um, I would I would actually download and listen to this one. Um, I really yeah. enjoyed it, um, um, and I like that uh, Stevie was expecting. Like we're we're watching the end credits, and Steve was like, "Oh, this is just like." They're playing Ghostbusters music. Yeah. They're not. It's not. I said, yeah. It's like not a Dua Lipa remix. It's not anything. <laughs> like I it would be fine to do that, but at the same sure, time, sure, I'm sure. like, I'm glad it's just the flat out. Just yeah. They're playing Ray Parker Jr.'s Ghostbusters, yeah. which is in universe. Yeah, uh, it is. Which which is great. Yeah, uh, Ghostbusters cereal is in universe. Yeah. Kenner toys are in universe. Like yeah. it, it validated everything, folks. Yeah, it's all canon. Yeah. Um, I I love that. I just absolutely love that fact. Um, and Elmer and uh, Gogari says Bernstein knocked it out of the park. Nobody can replace him. Um, it's my favorite comedy score of all time. It's, it's it is great. It's so good. It's it's, it's so good. It it hits every tone, and there's a lot of different nuances to Ghostbusters, and he hits them all perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, um, my favorite, my, my favorite one is the uh, uh, g like after the uh, 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 Judgment Day bit, and now it goes to the. <laughs> I love that part. Yeah. <laughs> 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 With Dickless coming out, yeah. <laughs> God damn, <laughs> that score is amazing. So good, it's so good. Um, I love Sue. Uh, Post Malone sad core cover of Ghostbusters theme. <laughs> sure, yeah, I guess. Ghostbusters. Um, but I think that's the best part about Ghostbusters too. Is and I probably why Bobby Brown stands out so much more mm -hmm. is because the score is so bad. But that song is like it's not a remix of ghostbusters it's just yeah. a new song it's just a new song and then uh and then uh um grace uh what's her name um who played phoebe uh had her ghostbusters McKenna song grace. in afterlife yeah, yeah mm -hmm. mckenna grace so it's like it is weird that they didn't have a ghostbusters song but we were kind of happy that they just played 
yeah like parker's jr as was you know without yeah i, I without I, having anything obnoxious if anything though i kind of wish it, it um the the after i've had more stuff going on with the credits this one's just more like their names which is fine but the first two movies pretty much the uh, the first one is you know it's it's the aftermath of you know the, the building blowing up or whatever but it's still it's like you see Ernie Hudson and it says Ernie Hudson. And then in Ghostbusters yeah. 2, it's more of the like a uh, predator ending where it's just like seeing yeah. like, here's yeah, the yeah. cast coming out and, you know, bowing and having their moment with their name. I, it, I kind of wish more, it, it would kind of bring that back, that eighties thing. Right. Back, I, I do really dig that. Um, and then yeah, the so mid scene, did do one, but yeah. yeah, the mid credit scene. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. I like it. it it's really, like I don't need the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man to come back. No, but I do. I do kind of like the idea of Mini Marshmallows being a global pandemic. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And a nuisance again. We'll need Ghostbusters everywhere. Yeah, except, you know, other than just New York. Mm-hmm. Well, he they, he brought them from. They're still kind like, of uh, like, being a nuisance in Oklahoma. Like Vegas Ghostbusters. Like how great would Vegas oh, Ghostbusters man. be? Think of I all think the ghosts. Would. A slot machine? A possessed slot machine? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Spitting out coins and chomping mm-hmm. stuff and, and hitting with... Oh, I love that, Chase. Mini Puffs, the new spectral equivalent of cockroaches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, See, what, Jay, was that big state puff behind you? Uh, It is the... It's old at this point. It's a Comic-Con exclusive Diamond Select Ghostbusters Bank. It is my favorite head sculpt ever done on a on a state puff it's like pitch perfect um but uh like I, I don't know what be able to nail. right but it, nobody like that's yeah. the, that's the best looking one i've ever seen and that's why he's yeah. there in prominence but um but mattel's one looks dopey um and uh, the kenner one is great uh but it's small like it's just uh uh anyways yeah we need a great state yeah. buff Nobody's done yeah. it right yet. Haslab, work on it. Yeah, exactly. Let's let's get on it, Hasbro. Damn it. I, there, there's going to be a Hasbro at at WonderCon. Um, so I don't know if you're I'm going. Not gonna this year. I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be there this year. No. Okay. Well, the, Hasbro's setting up, and I guess they're going to be revealing some Ghostbuster things. Um, but I'll say probably don't hold your breath. I I'm not expecting much, but maybe we can all be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Um, but that's it, uh, Ralph. You, my friend, again, I, I don't, I don't understand how you're even functioning uh, as a human being right now. And so I appreciate you taking the time to do this tonight. But uh, you, you're, you're hard at work on uh, your last documentary. Um, mm-hmm. Any, any updates you want to give? I mean, if any people don't realize that that's something you're the a producer. Yeah, yeah, and, I'm producing and, and, the, yeah. A, a documentary, a full blown documentary called yeah. "Getting Lost." Uh, you can find that at gettinglostdoc.com and it's on all the socials. Uh, you can find it at casino skunk, uh, com. I have a link there and you know, uh, we're just interviewing uh, as many people as we can in the fan community and cast and crew. And, uh, yeah, if you're a film score geek like me, um, you'll be happy to know that we were given, um, an hour and five minutes of unreleased, fully orchestrated music by Michael Giacchino for our documentary. So that's exciting. Oh, we hit 155. Great. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, 1,427 backers. That's crazy. Um, go go to that. Go click on that updates. Uh, that updates tab right below the main video. Oh, yeah, click on that. Scroll down, and we'll see if there's any fun people that we've interviewed that we've talked to. Oh, we've talked to those people since we last, <laughs> since I was last on screen. We've talked to a whole lot more people since you're last. On. Yeah, yeah. There's, but there's certain people you can't say. Um, but uh, all those were lovely people. Um, yeah, we we've been just. Yeah, Greg Grumberg. I like that Taylor put the picture of <laughs> Seth Norris with the mustache. Uh-oh. Got a great story about that mustache. Um, he did not know that they were going to Photoshop a mustache on him, and they did. Uh, it, it's, I mean, listen, if you're a fan of Lost um, or if you're a fan of fandom, 
um, if there's something you you are a fan of, um, it's going to spotlight kind of what it's like to be a fan and the relationship between the show Lost and its fans, which was right at the start of Twitter, mm-hmm. uh, DVRs, podcasting, yeah, um, and stuff like that. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of it's, weird how that turned out where because it was of the that, perfect like, storm. Yeah, yeah, like we were, you know, some of the first podcasts ever. Definitely yeah. the first podcast about TV shows. Yeah. Uh, uh, we all had Twitter accounts while it was still phone only, not like, you know, se- sending texts yeah. to, to do to four, one, four, one, four, one or yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. Like that's that's why there was a, a text limit. It's because you would do it on your phone uh, through texting because um, yeah. this was before the iPhone and uh it's and actually I don't think people realize that Twitter was born out of a podcasting service. Um, uh, uh, what was that podcasting service called? I forget now. But anyway, I don't know. I don't know. Just it was it was a very it was a primordial time in the internet. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now Twitter is, uh, I don't know, it's, it's if you yeah. Twitter anymore. But anywho, yeah. uh, yeah, please go. Uh, I I put a link in the chat. I'll put it in the description as well. If you love Lost, um, this. I mean, it's so cool seeing um, like uh, all these news outlets pick it up or, or people that I have, they have no idea that we're friends and that I, I know, like I have this, I, I know, I've watched you do all this hard work from like the very, the, just the kernel of the idea to this being a reality, yeah. but people that, no, like, oh, you did a last podcast? Yeah, there's this last documentary. And I was like, yeah, my friend is doing that. Like, so even people that have no idea of the connection are presenting it. it to well, yeah, that too. But but presenting yeah. me that hey, this last documentary sounds really cool. I was like, yeah, yeah, my friend's doing that. That's his thing. No, yeah. you should say, yeah, I know, I'm in it. <laughs> I guess so, but I I think more I I I look at it as it's, like I'm really yeah. proud of everything you've accomplished because it's like. It, it was a kernel of idea that you had and then like it's like you have no idea what this has become um yeah. it is it we we uh, i can't wait to announce some of the people that we've we've talked to um i can't wait to do there's there's like two more interviews that we need to do and i can't wait to get those scheduled and do them um because we're we're we've we've slowly it feels like the game mortal Kombat where you start at the bottom and you fight mm-hmm. like sub zero, but it shows you the whole ladder of everybody yeah. you need to face. And we're moving up that ladder and we're <laughs> heading to the big main bad guy. We're heading to Shang Tsung or something. I don't know, <laughs> but we're, we're at the point where we're getting to the final boss of this thing. And it's, it's crazy. The amount of access we have, mm-hmm. um, it, you, you have no idea like what's coming. Um, I can tell you this, we, there was a, there was a, a article, that brought us up and was saying how we're focusing on the show, the history of the show, its impact with pop culture, with the fandom and stuff. And they're not really looking for answers. Um, I got answers. We got (laughs) answers. We, there's stuff in here, Jay, that's going to blow your mind and I can't talk about it, but like I hear things where it's like, oh, that might divide whatever's left of the lost fandom and the community and the, the people who were the where the the finale split the fandom in half mm-hmm. and people yeah. went away and didn't like it. You had this group of people. I feel like that might get split in half again. Just hearing the stuff that we've been getting, hearing the stuff that we've been uncovering, it's been it's been crazy. And I cannot wait to tell you guys, I feel like once the movie's out a lot of lost podcasts are going to come out of retirement and have some discussions on the stuff mm-hmm. we talk about yeah. in the movie because because we got some doozies um doozies for you guys for Ooh, sure that's exciting for that sure is exciting I, um, I can't i can't tell you anything about it because <laughs> i don't want to know the movie, i don't even want to know but but you're gonna you're gonna be like oh kind of changes a lot kind of <laughs> changes a lot um so so look forward to it i mean man it's it's been it's been great it's been great i mean you know you and I, I got to say this too like we went to Nestor Carbonell's house and we've mm-hmm. gone to uh, everyone's home yeah 
And every single person we've talked to has been super nice. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. People are like, oh, that person sounds like an like a total a-hole. And I'm yeah. like, they were they like these people like yeah. made tea for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These people like literally like brought us into our their homes and yeah. said, do whatever you want. Grab something out, out of the fridge if you need anything. It's like they're all super nice. We haven't run yeah. into a single person who like, wasn't just like nice. Yeah. And so it, it kind of makes you feel good being a fan for, of a thing for like 20 years and to find out that, Oh, they're all like really cool people. Yeah. Yeah. Like Damon was really cool. Yeah. Um, and, and he, he, you know, gave us access to more people. Yeah. Um, those people are cool. Yeah. Uh, no matter how high you go up on that ladder, you think, okay, we're going to get to a point where someone's really kind of mm -hmm. just like, okay, let's get it over with. No, yeah. everybody has been super cool and willing to yeah. answer questions and, and being very candid and having laughs. And we find that when we're done with the interviews, they still want to talk about lost, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. they're like, not they're, it's not like, Oh, good. I've, we're done talking about that dumb thing. No, they still want to talk about it. There's people yeah. with hard outs. We have to be out of here by this time. Yeah. Going into the interview. We have to be out by six o'clock on, yeah. on the nose. And it's like 6 15, and they're like, no, it's okay. We'll keep chatting about lost. Yeah, yeah. So it's like one of those things where it's like there there are some people who are guarded going into it, but when they're done, they're like, Oh, you guys are really cool. And we keep hearing that. A lot of the actors from Lost are in text groups, text message groups, talking about us behind our backs <laughs> and, and them saying, oh, they're actually really cool. Yeah. So it's been really it's been really nice um, that they're cool with us. Um, you know, uh, I don't know what else to say. It's been yeah. rad, dude. It's been yeah. really rad. Um, you're going to and I think you're going to love it. I think you're going to love it. I'll, 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 you, I'll love I'll it. Send you I, I would love it even if it was, I don't know, like one, you know, background actor and what I, I don't care. Like to me, I, I would, I, I it's going to be incredible. Um, I, I'm really excited for it. Um, yeah. But I think if what I love, fan, you're going to love it. I, I think what I love the best though, is seeing that casino skunk productions. Up on I don't know if I get that. I don't know if I get that. I don't know. I'm calling. I'm calling. Call Taylor. I'm calling Taylor right now. If if it if he wants that to be in there, I'm gonna have to probably come up with my own music. You, uh, and you damn well should. Ralph, but I don't think it, I don't think it'll be in there. It, mm. I would love it. I would love mm. it. Love it would that. be. It would make me Send lose some, my mind. Some heated emails, all caps. But you okay. will see my name up on a big screen. On a I, I, and like being in, in at Frozen Empire and mm. seeing Ryan Dole's name, I was like, what? Ryan yeah like, yeah that's awesome like um, yeah uh, uh it's gonna be i mean i i think you'll love it. i'm gonna send you i'm gonna send you our our updated sizzle okay because, awesome um, awesome you uh know, you can't share it i what who am i gonna share it to i don't, I don't know yeah. or you know what yeah I'll do a live stream about it um yeah. but uh frozen empire go see it we loved it. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then we'll Ralph is going to go see that King Kong. I, I probably won't see that. I'll wait till streaming. Well, I'll let you know if it's all right. Oh, yeah. If I'll you're like, you if you go like, no, you should go see this movie. Because here's the thing. It. The best way to experience a kaiju movie is on the big screen. You're so right. if it's like, hey, listen, it's all right. But if you're going to see it, big is the way to see it. Yeah. But if I'm like, dude, it's just, it's not, it doesn't matter. Just wait. I'll let you know. So should we come back and, we'll and do a stream for Tarot? For tarot? <laughs> yeah, sure. How about this? Yeah, we'll we'll do a show for Tarot. Neither of us will have seen it. <laughs> uh kids loved the movie, by the way. They loved Frozen oh, yeah. Empire. Great. The end, the whole like ending sequence, Zach was just like, Yeah, yeah. He was like putting his hands up and like cheering uh, uh all the all the scenes. He freaking loved it. <laughs> the kids, the kids love it. Kids <laughs> kids are gonna love it uh free balloons for the kids uh yeah smash the like everybody um what's coming up uh tomorrow morning uh they bumped up when we can unveil all the masters of the universe stuff so i think i'm going to do it as a live stream tomorrow morning 9 a.m eastern standard time so if you're awake uh nope yeah, it, don't, no, yeah no offense if you can't be but uh i'm going to uh, go through all of the fall motu reveals live at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, 
uh, and and we'll and we'll nerd out to those images uh, together. So uh, you know, if you at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, we're looking at all the new Masters of Universe toys, Masterverse Origins and Turtles. So we got we got stuff to look at. Um, I, uh, yeah, it'll be 6 a.m. for uh, that. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, right, but, uh, uh, but come hang out. Sparking Force Mac was so cool. Um, that's it. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out tonight. And until next time, hasta luego. And goodbye. Take care, everybody.